A very good evening everyone. We are back with another episode of this interview series called Journey to the Crown. This is the 6th episode and on this series we're trying to get to know the life stories of the state winners for Femina Miss India 2023. rather than directly seeing them perform on the big stage this time we're deciding to get to know each one of these ladies a little better through this interview series we get to hear the inspiring moments from their lives but also the ups and downs that they have gone through and what is their life beyond pageantry as well and we're trying to learn as much as possible so that in a way we get to know each one of the contestants representing their states but also the interview and these conversations should be helpful for aspirants who are vying to compete at beauty pageants such as miss india in the coming years so with that being said let's give a very warm welcome and get our guest for today on board hi hi namita how are you i am good how are you doing i'm great i'm great What's that up? makeup and hair is absolutely stunning because i just went like this <laughs> Just came back from the shoot today. I know. How did it go? I saw the BTS. It looked amazing. It went well. It went great, and I think we have a lot coming forward, and we must keep an eye out for it. Yes, I'm looking forward to your official photos. Um, you look stunning, and thank you. I'm gonna say this now. Yeah. Has someone told you that there's a small resemblance with Sushmita Sen? No, no one's ever said that, but I've heard Juhi Chawla. That's not Juhi Chawla, too. Juhi Chawla as well. Yes. Now that you see it, I see that too. But I feel like the face, because I just saw, um, you know, Sushmita Sen, ma'am. She walked at Lucknow Fashion Week and she posted this live video just yesterday, I believe. And you reminded me so much of her instantly. Thank you. That's such a great compliment. I love. I love both of them. They're all queens. Yes. In fact, now one of our viewers is saying she looks like Deepika Padukone. But yes, oh, we have a lot of. <laughs> you <laughs> that's something my parents say but i tell them it's not true it's you because it's you're seeing from heart eyes you know fair eyes that yeah she's the <laughs> she's the apple of our eye and she's also the queen of yeah. the house yeah firstly thank you so much navya for taking out your time i know you had such a busy day and post to shoot the fact that you've been able to take out the time for this interview means a lot thank to you. me and for you thank you pleasure it was all mine I would love to begin with introducing you. So, for the viewers who have joined on this episode today, Navya is a 24-year-old who has just completed her MBBS, and if she's not just this pretty face that you see, she's also a practicing doctor. And that's not all; she's also represented Haryana at state level for folk dance competitions, and she's also won several titles at college as well. I want to start off with just that. Do you perform the state dance of Haryana? Yes. It was a folk tradition, so Haryana was with the cone on the head and every the skirt. Oh wow! Yeah. And how did you end up learning this particular dance form? Uh, I've always been that kid who's uh, all who's been into extracurriculars. So I not studied a lot. I also went to a lot of classes. So one time I was a dancer. I uh, it was in Panchkula, that's the part of Haryana, right? Uh, Uh, so there was a competition, and uh, my teacher said that she knew a lot of things. So she said, "Let's take part in it." And we got the uh, folk dance, and we got the district surprisingly, and we ended at the uh, state level, which was in Sarsa. Oh wow! Yeah. So it just came naturally to you. Yeah, because uh, I've learned classical, so I think a lot of dance forms become easy after you've learned classical. Dance. And what classical? Form? Have you been trained in before that? Uh, I've learned Bharatnatyam. When I was a little little kid, I learned Kathak, but that's not very fresh with me. I've learned Bharatnatyam after that for four five years. Oh wow! I I'm assuming you're amazing at that too because you have the expressive eyes and face <laughs> that you know really stands out in classical dance. So oh, thank thank you. I hope so. I I hope I'm good. I try to be. Are you planning to do that for your talent round? Uh, yes, I actually uh, submitted it as my talent video because we were supposed to do it online, right? Yeah, so I did that. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to that uh, awards night that will happen as well. Now, one of the things that you know I've been thinking about 
you posted on your social media on the day that you were leaving for Mumbai that you almost missed your flight and that you weren't having it. I love the personality that you know just came through that post itself. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. What was happening? Uh, uh, so my house isn't very far away from the airport, so it takes approximately fifteen to twenty minutes to be there. So that is the estimate I had in my mind and. To carry such big suitcases with thirty days and forty days worth of luggage isn't an easy task, right? And saying goodbyes and everyone's crying and everyone's happy that oh my god, our daughter's gonna be away for such a long time. We got uh, we started from home at at the approximated time, but the whole you know the way it was under construction. There were so many diversions, and um, a few some of my family members were waiting at the airport to see, see me off. Some of my friends were waiting there. And I was really late, and I got five minutes with them. We took like pictures, like really quickly, and then I rushed inside. It was a big. And when I went inside, they said your baggage is overweight, so redistribute your stuff. So it was another fiasco, but I boarded that flight, and thankfully I'm here. Finally, you made it. Yes, it was very heartwarming to see. You know the way. Families bidding farewell, and then there are more people at the airport, and it felt like usually we see this type of thing happen, um, you know, after the pageant is over during homecoming. But you had that environment around you when you know you were just leaving for the pageant, and I saw that, and you know, so it's not just your dream, I suppose. It's a collective dream that the family is in it with you. Yes, they've always been very supportive of everything that I do. Uh, being a doctor was my choice. Being uh, coming here is my choice, and uh, they just they they know that if you follow your heart, you're going to do something good. So that's what they tell me to do, and that's what I do. Wow, well, it's as simple as that. I wanted to actually know this: what made you want to become a doctor? Because when you said you know it was my choice, was there a person, or was it just something you saw that made you want to become a doctor? And now that you're practicing, uh, what is your specialization, or is that not done I'm yet? Per- Doing my internship right now, okay. yeah, from Chandigarh. So Chandigarh. Uh, I've I've grown up in an environment where both my parents are doctors, and it is not as simple as if your parents are doctors, you will be a doctor because usually it's the other way around. That if your parents are doctors, you're like, I don't want to study this much. I don't want to put in this this much much effort. But uh, they really motivated me, and the environment that I was surrounded with was always about uh, serving the society and working for them. And both of them are in government hospitals, uh, and uh, I've always uh, I went yeah, when I used to be little and I had those parent teacher meetings and I used to get free early from school. So my mom used to take me with her to her hospital and I would sit and I would see how you know how she's impacting so many lives by you know by if you treat one patient you just don't treat that one person you're actually helping the whole family you're treating the whole family right you're healing them and that is something that really touched my heart. And uh, with time, as I grew up, there were incidents where I thought that uh, there were people who used to help us at home. So the ch- one of them came to us, and uh, her child was really sick. But uh, it was too late. We tried to help her. We sent her to the hospital. We gave her the best care that we could, but nothing could be done because the child was way too sick. And that is something that really motivated me. That. I need to do something for these people, and not only just impact them in a way of curing them as a doctor, but also at a primary level where my outreach, that is this platform, is as big as it can be, so that I can, you know, uh, reach out to them and make them understand it. Because if today, if Amitabh Bachchan is telling me, "Do boon zindagi ki is polio," I listen to him, right? Yeah. And It is a platform that actually impacts lives, and uh, that is what motivated me towards medicine, and that is something that motivates me towards pageantry as well. Wow, I loved the clarity here, and you know the way you painted a whole picture. I don't think I've heard this before. That yeah, you've seen one changing someone's life up close, like you know, right with your parents, right there. So it was very close to heart. And on top of that, when you said. That you are treating a patient, you are not just fixing them, but you are actually healing the entire family. Yeah, I think that wholesome perception is what a beauty queen truly needs as well. You know, when she takes everyone along with her, and that's how she defines the success. I love that. So, on a lighter note, I have been loving your wardrobe. Oh, 
thank you yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely loving, especially that orange outfit that you wore, and you just dazzled everyone. So I was, you know, when I saw the picture, I was like, I really am fascinated by her taste because that was such a solid color to pull off, and it was not like you're trying too hard. It was just that color, right? But then the confidence with which you pulled that off, and then I just started stalking your wardrobe, honestly. <laughs> and you have a very unique sense of style. So how would you? Describe your personal style. Like, what goes to your mind when you're picking out an outfit? Uh, it has to be simple, yet classy, and uh, bright. That is definitely something I go for. I don't go for dull colors because I know I don't know. Bright is what I go for always. That's just like the basic thing that I always see. So yeah, but that's definitely simple. helping you stand out because when people think simple, they also think pastels. You yeah. know. And then here you are with like wowza! <laughs> I was flash of color. Yeah, one day I wore orange, and uh, a day before I think I wore green, that bright green that I wore. Well, the timing is such, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's all full of bright colors. colors. Yeah. What about I? I am loving it. I do feel like you know, that's a little bit of my style. Like you know, with your outfits, not be safe. Like with makeup, I'm gonna be like simple, nude, basic, classy. Yeah. And then you have that pop of color. So I was thinking, is it color blocking that she's doing? But then I was like, no, this is not color blocking. This is just color everywhere. <laughs> Colorful like my personality. So yeah. <laughs> well, I think you're like you've got in the wardrobe right on spot. Um, and because yes, I can see you know in our viewers also so many of them are appreciating again your outfit choices. What would be that? That styling tip that you would share with, say, a young girl who's aspiring for pageants. Keep it simple, and most importantly, don't try too hard. Just show you through whatever you do, be it your wardrobe, be it your words, be it the way you treat other people. It has to be you. Otherwise, there is absolutely no point of it, and that is what pageantry is all about. If you represent yourself, you are your own voice. Only then can you be other people's voice as well. Oh, that's so true. You've gotten it right. I feel you're wearing the outfit. The outfit shouldn't wear you. Yeah, that's what you're wearing. Yes. Okay. So you know you're a practicing doctor. You have a lot of clarity in which path and direction you want to go in in life. If you did not have to. You've told me why you want to be a doctor, but if you didn't have to earn money at all, I want to understand: is there any hobby or interest that you have that you know? If I didn't have to care about the world and society, this is what I would be doing. That's just how I'm built. I mean, it takes a long time for people to really understand that, and they don't believe it at first. But that is just how I'm built. I cannot function otherwise. Money has never been one of the reasons for me to do anything, and I'm thankful for that. And I don't want to sound like a brat, but I'm really thankful. I understand that it comes; it's, it's a privilege, right? So money is never the reason that I have had to choose a career or um, have had to like do something. Uh, thank you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would have been a doctor, and whatever I would have done, I would have done for the society only because that is something that really makes me happy. It does. It just there's this joy that you feel, and it can't you can't find it anywhere else. Even if you like talk nicely to a patient, that is another kind of service that you're giving out into the society. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think kindness is underrated. You need more of it in the world. You need to, you know, be more than your live for more than yourself. That's why we're here. Wow. I think our viewers should be taking notes right now because I feel like this is such a, like really really good advice actually. Um, I think everyone should yes believe in that and there's a lot of authenticity in the way you've told me you know why your desire to be a doctor. Uh, it's not just something that was you know it came with the inheritance. What has been the biggest challenge so far in this journey for you, Navya? And how did you handle it? the first step so you think of it that okay right miss india i like it i can do it uh, should i do it when do i do it why do i do it can i do it so all these questions go on in your head and any normal girl who's any ordinary girl who's out there and wants to be miss india 
will think of this am i good enough am i like do i kind of fit into her shoes can i actually be her but uh, the thing is that as long as you don't take the first step and start helping yourself and start working on it and start doing something that helps you get closer to your dreams your dreams are not going to come true uh i used to go to um I used to go to a convent school, and we had those diaries with a quote on every page. So one of those quotes was, "We used to have a quiz as well for that." So one of those pages read that uh, God only helps those those who help themselves. So we need to like step up and take the first step and help ourselves. I thought of becoming Miss India. It was something that attracted me and um, has attracted me after uh, Manchi Shiller one and the way that she. took her beauty with a purpose to a global level and i followed her journey and i liked the impact positive impact that she had on the lives of so many other people and i thought that um, with the plat- this this platform i can actually do so much for the world um uh, and i wanted to do that uh, but it wasn't easy i had to grow i had to work on myself there's so many aspects to pageantry um uh, and i did and here i am Wow, that is again. I am a sucker for quotes as well. <laughs> the diary incident that you just said. Um, I think yeah, that's a good takeaway. That that quote, I we have all read that quote yeah. in storybook, you know, in school. But yes, that taking away that okay, you need to take an action, and only when you do that, you can attract what you want. It's very well put. Thank you so much. I have one last question for you, Navya, because I'm really intrigued to see. You know the fun side of Navya. Is there is there any unique talent um, that you have, or something that we don't know about you? Unique talent. I think unique talent. I've never really thought about it. Something that you don't know about me is that uh, I laugh a lot, and uh, I don't know how to pull a straight face. which really uh, <laughs> is tough these days because if you have to pose in front of the camera you need to pull all faces and you need to know how to do it and uh, as soon as someone says please don't smile i'll burst out laughing so that's one thing i think and i think this is how my face is built i've heard it from teachers also why you're smiling in the class but well i wasn't <laughs> that's just my face you naturally are smiling yeah. but i'm sure that you've made all the faces that you had to with your photo shoot because i saw the bts and they're like partially covering your face but i think i could recognize you obviously yeah. there i can't wait to see i think you've done amazing at the in front of the camera as well and behind the camera as well now that i've spoken to you you know this is what i was waiting for and the interaction part of the pageant that i feel like needs to come out more when it comes to beauty pageants because we see you in front of the camera we yeah. see you walk on the ramp but only when you when you really get to hear their story now now i know your reason to be in the pageant and i know why a doctor and i know you a lot better now so it was yeah. wonderful talking to you and thank you for sharing thank so much with me thank you thank you so much for having me with thank you really- and i think our viewers have um loved this conversation and i think some of your friends are probably dropping unique talents <laughs> about you here. that's my sister <laughs> okay yes can eat it and still be fit uh-huh. okay <laughs> a lot of us wish we had that type of metabolism yeah i eat uh, i eat wisely let's just put it that way <laughs> It's a good thing. I mean, come on, food is love. But I'm love. a, but I'm yeah. a big foodie. But I am a big foodie. That's that's another thing. That's true. I think that's why we vibe so much. I'm a big time foodie, and the same thing does happen to me. I I can't, you know, put on a lot of weight. So, I've but yes, that doesn't mean you can just. Uh, I've spoken to you before once when you um, helped me na- navigate the uh, the my duty with the purpose project. Oh, uh, when I um, Coco Bell. in a session yes oh i idea yeah, there's only one session that i gave there yeah, I was i'm there. so sorry that i don't recall i it's okay. i do there were a lot of girls but i've been there <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay now people are revealing a lot more about you than you've told me she sings she's a big time foodie 
thank you so much viewers i love the participation here <laughs> but thank you so much um navya i know you have a busy schedule and you also need to eat probably and get a good sleep tonight you had a really really long day thank you for taking out the time once again and thank i wish you. you all the very best for the competition thank you it's been lovely talking to you thank you bye bye <laughs>